Hi, welcome to um, some fun projects that we're going to be doing. We're going to be making a whole series of pin cushions. Um, so there's actually 20 all together and we're just starting. This is pin cushion number one. So we're just having a little bit of fun. There are patterns available um, to purchase from my website. The website is gourmetquilter.com. Um, the pattern would be under 2020 Tasty Treats for um, for June, it would be for pincushions, and you would end up getting 20 pincushion patterns with videos for each one, and so it goes on. And so if you have the pattern, you're going to have something like this to download and print, that's going to tell you all about what we need. So it also, in the pattern, talks a little bit about different fillings and things that you might use for pincushions, because there's lots of different things that you can use. Uh, primarily I'm going to be using some crushed walnut shell, but um, sometimes other things as well. Uh, so I'll show you what I'm using as I go. And you may have your own preferred pincushion filling. So this is our pincushion number one. Just a fun little, fairly straightforward pincushion to get started. So we've got a little patchwork block here. And it's, guess what, a pinwheel. Because it's for pincushions. And it's got a plain back, although it is quilted. So I like to often use a little bit of batting with my pincushions to line my fabric, especially if I'm using something like a, a walnut shell or even a sand or anything that's granular like that so that it doesn't sort of seep through the fabric. It's not essential to do it that way, I just kind of like it. So we'll get started on this little pincushion. It's only small, it's kind of cute. I know that um, I have some young friends who don't think that it should be good for pins, they think it should be good for their little dolls or something like that as a little cushion. So there's always those options. We'll get started on this one as we go now. So what we need is some little rectangles and some squares. So I'm doing a grey with a little red and white stripe pinwheel this time. And we need a couple of squares of batting. And we need one for the back. And I've already gone ahead and quilted that one with some batting. So what we need to do first of all to make our pinwheel is have our rectangles and our squares. And we want to position them so that we're going to put the square on top of the rectangle at one end and we're going to stitch diagonally so I've actually just put a diagonal fold in that so that we can um, stitch along that diagonal line. Now if you're wanting to use a stripe like I have you might want to put the stripes always in the same direction whether they're up and down or whether they're across just so that if you've got it going around the stripe goes around but other fabrics of course it doesn't matter so much but a stripe seems to show which direction it's going in. So now I just need to sew because I've already pressed my line to give myself the diagonal line. You could draw the line, whatever you like. And I just need to stitch that line. And then we're going to trim that away. So as I said, this is a fairly straightforward little one to get started, but very cute just the same. I quite like these little pin cushions. So now I just want to to trim off the corner and then press that so just quarter of an inch away from the seam line just trimming off that little corner we don't need that and I'm just going to press that so I'm going to press that now into the corner there so that's looking pretty good and then we need to join it together with a rectangle to make a unit so we've got to make four units like this to make the little pinwheel so I've got this one ready to go here. I can just join this up so that so that this seam, it's important that you get it in the right position so that the seam goes along the little triangle there. So I've got a couple of these ready to go. I could pop the other one through while I'm here and chain piece them as well so that they're done. So, as I said, you need four of these little units. And I'll just kind of press those into the rectangle that we haven't done anything much to, so that it's the seam will want to go that way because of this um, diagonal seam coming down into it. So then we've got our four units now. So they all look the same, but we need to turn them around so that when we join them back together again, they're going to make that fun little pinwheel. 
So I'm going to go ahead now and join those two up. So if you're wanting them to match in the center, you just want to be able to um, put those seams together that you should be able to feel that they're just nestling nicely there. So we just make them do them in two pairs to start with. So I'll go ahead and do this bit because you don't need to see me doing these little seams. You've seen this before. So I've joined them into two pairs. They're the same. You can just if you were making a string of these, you could chain piece them through, they're just the same. I've pressed the seams to one side so that when I turn that one around, those seams will nestle again. So now I just need to join that up and then we have our little block. Um, this makes a great little block in a quilt as well, of course. So I'll go ahead and join this up. So I've joined my seam. I'm just going to press that last seam open because it gets quite busy in the center there where the, all those points meet. So I think that's going to sit quite nicely now. So there's my little pinwheel with a little candy stripe in there. And so I would like to now go ahead and do a little bit of quilting on that. When I made this one here, I've just done some straight lines, approximately half an inch apart. I didn't measure them, I just kind of stitch them. So I think I'm going to go and do the same thing and I've done the same. I've already quilted the back piece. The back piece is a bit larger. We're going to be trimming it down. And again, I've just done some straight lines. So I'm going to go ahead and just use just regular straight stitching um, and quilt this piece. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you the next bit. So I've gone ahead, I've just done some some straight lines straight through the patchwork there. And now I just need to trim it, just like we do when we trim quilts or other things, back to the block size. Don't need all that extra batting around the edge. And then we'll have to trim the back piece to the same size so that they match. The front and the back are the same size. So I'll go ahead and um, get this one trimmed down as well. So I've trimmed them both, they're both the same size. Now we just need to stitch them together. We're just making a, a tiny little cushion really. So I'm just going to put them right sides together and we can sew all the way around, but we do need to leave a gap. So in one of the sides, leave a gap of a couple of inches or so for turning out. Other than that, it's just a quarter inch seam all the way around. So I've gone ahead, I've left myself a gap, I've joined it all around. Um, it's a good idea just to clip off those corners because when we turn this out the right way, those corners can get a bit bulky. So if you just don't cut your stitching, but if you just cut close by, that's a really helpful thing to do. And then we just need to turn that out the right way and then we can fill it up. Just imagine a whole little basket of just of little pin cushions, I think would be rather fun with or without pins seeing as I'm not really a big fan of pins because they generally attack me. Right, so just want to push those corners out. Sometimes it's helpful to have a little something to help you just on the corners. Um, and also just to run around the actual seam. It just helps it sit a little bit better and even though we're going to be filling it I still like to press that before I go any further because I just like to make sure those seams get the best opportunity they can and this one here that we've left open I like to press those edges in so that there's at least a line to come back to once we've filled it when we want to join it up and we're just going to be joining it up uh, by hand so that's looking decidedly flat it needs some dinner so I'm going to be using this um, crushed walnut shell so this is kind of a messy project when you tip it all over the table and um, they're just crushed walnut shells really nothing too complicated about that I find it works really well if I have a funnel I'm not putting anything else because we've got the batting in there I'm just putting the walnut shell in there and I find that that works really nicely you could fill it just with a, a fibre fill or wool or there's lots of different things you can put in pincushions that I 
choosing to do it this way so you can kind of direct the, the walnut shell and even though you kind of can't really push it down hard like you can with some of the the fibre fillings you can still give it a good push and get it to go into those corners and wiggle it around a little bit. It's a good idea if you work over a tray in case some little bits spill. And so when you think you're just about done, it's, it's always very hard to give exact quantities of how much you're going to put into something like this. It really is a bit of a guessing game. So I like to just sort of push it around a little bit and have a look. Sometimes I've put too much in and I'd say that I've probably got a touch much. Just a, maybe, maybe a touch. So I'm just going to spill just a little bit out again, not very much. I think that probably feels a little bit better. You do need to be able to stitch that close, but also just by giving it a good little squidge around, that helps it sort of settle in a little bit. And I think that's probably looking pretty good now. So I can move this out of the way again. Sweep up my crumbs. And then I've just got a needle and thread. I'm just going to hand stitch that closed. Um, and I just do like a, a, a little over stitch really. You want to keep it fairly close together because especially if you're using anything that's granular like this, you don't want them um, all falling out. So don't leave, don't do big stitches because the gap would allow little granules to come through. So it's just a little stitching across that I do. There's other ways. I'm not the best hand sewer in the world, so I may not be doing the best sort of stitching. You may have a much better way to do it. So I'll go ahead and do this, and then I can show it to you when it's all finished. So I've gone ahead. I've finished my little pincushion. It's looking really cute. I really like these little pincushions. So now I have two. So this is the start of my little pincushion collection, it seems. So that was pincushion number one out of our series, and I will see you again with pincushion number two.